that you've done and yet going to do in our lives, O oh Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your peace that transcends all understanding. And as we come before you this morning, Father, seeking your face, sitting here at your feet to learn from you, we ask, O oh Lord, that you illuminate our hearts and our minds, that you give us understanding and enlightenment of the things that, Father, you desire for us to know and to understand. Father, cause your word to be life and to come to life to us, O oh Lord. We thank you, Father, for understanding. We thank you for deliverance on today, O oh Lord. Father, wash our minds in the blood of your Son, Yeshua. Father, that we may be free of anything that exalts itself against your knowledge, O oh Lord, against Christ the Messiah. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done and yet doing in our lives, O oh Father. We praise you and we magnify you. We bless your people on today, O oh Father. Set them free, O oh Father, in their spirit, man, and in their soul. That they may be the men and women that you have called them to be, O oh Lord. To be warriors in your kingdom in these end times, O oh Father. Father, give us the boldness of Joshua. Give us the faith of Abraham and the promises of Isaac and the blessings and courage of Jacob, O oh Lord. Father, may we know, come to know you expressly and intimately as our Lord, our Savior, and our King. We thank you, Father, again for another day as we sit in your presence, seeking your face, O oh Lord, with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our strength to come to know you and understand, Father, your word. We thank you, Abba. We thank you, Daddy God, for all that you're doing in our lives, O oh Lord, and yet desiring to do. We thank you, Father. We praise you and magnify you. In the name of your Son, Yeshua, Hamashiach, we pray. Amen and amen.
hallelujah, who is the image and likeness of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. Satan wants to blind the mind of the unbelievers that they may not discern the truth and you can be hallelujah you know you can have unbelief in certain areas in your Christian walk and and Satan targets this I did not have the mic on on Spreaker so that what we're what the study is blinding minds of unbelievers Satan works in the minds of unbelievers to blind them to the truth of the gospel. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. I'm going to read this 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 passage out of the LSM Bible. Hallelujah, which reads in whom the God of this age has blinded the thoughts of the unbelievers that the illumination of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God might not shine on them now Watchman Nee has this to say concerning this particular verse he says that Satan the deceiver the ruler of the present age who dominates today's world and hunts for man's worship by blinding his mind and his thoughts see the whole thing of it beloved is that Satan desires your worship and if he can keep you from the truth of the gospel hallelujah you will continue to worship him but he desires your worship whether you're a lost or whether you're a believer he desires your worship here it states in 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 that he is the God of this world the God of this age this present age this evil world system that consists of government hallelujah entertainment food and relationships but he dominates today's world he dominates it and he hunts for man's worship by blinding your mind and your mind by blinding your mind and your thoughts placing things in your mind and your heart to distract you away from the worship the true worship that God and God alone deserves that is has vital men's understanding and if you are listening or subjecting yourself to worldly music by some of these artists that have confessed out of their mouth that they have been possessed by a spirit most of them have even actors they will tell you and confess that they have been possessed by a spirit hallelujah that is a part of worship there must be a balance beloved in our lives if you're feeding yourself constantly and continually with worldly things, that is what your your soul is going to receive and grow by. But when you make the conscious decision in your heart to begin to feed your things with spiritual things, with the Word of God, in prayer, seeking God's face, meditation, hallelujah your spirit and your soul is transformed into the image of Christ watchman Nee goes on to say Christ as the image of God is the influences of his glory hence the gospel of Christ 
is the gospel of his glory that illuminates and shines forth. Satan, the god of this age, has blinded the thoughts and the minds of the unbelievers so that the illumination of the gospel of Christ's glory might not shine into their hearts. This is similar to a camera lens being covered so that the lights cannot shine into the camera to bring in the image. It is also like a blind man or a man with eyes veiled and to whom the light of the sun is unable to shine. Hallelujah. Shine in the Greek word means one to see distinctly to discern and two to shine hallelujah the enemy does not want the gospel to shine in your heart in certain areas of your life hallelujah now the gift of salvation is free beloved it's free but to walk with Christ is a cost and the enemy does not want you to know the truth that as long as you are living and walking in the flesh you cannot please God and you will not inherit the kingdom of God because the flesh is enemy against God and the spirit and it's God's desire for you to be totally set free hallelujah in your spirit and your soul to be healed completely and to be transformed into the image of Christ if you would turn your swords to John chapter 12 that's the gospel of John chapter 12 verse 31 and uh, also turn to Ephesians chapter 2 and hold your place at verse 2 that's Ephesians chapter 2 hold your place at verse 2 but John chapter 12 verse 31 reads now the judgment crisis of this world is coming on sentence is now being passed on this world now the ruler evil genius prince of this world shall be cast out expelled who is he talking about who is Christ referring to he is referring to Lucifer Satan the deceiver hallelujah the hater of men's soul in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 it reads in which at one time you walked Habakkuk, you were following the course and fashion of this world, were under the sway of the tendency of this present age, following the prince of the power of the air. You were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience the careless the rebellious and the unbelievers who go against the purposes of God here in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 he is telling you those that have received the gospel of Jesus Christ those that have identified themselves in Christ's death burial and resurrection through baptism they hallelujah are new creatures in Christ Jesus and he's describing who they were before that took place he says in which at one time you walked meaning past tense you are no longer walking in that you are no longer slaves to sin hallelujah but you have been set free and he also talks about the sons of disobedience that are still under the control of the demon spirit 
Hallelujah. Which is Lucifer. You can be someone, hallelujah, that has received Christ as Lord and Savior. And still, hallelujah, and still be under his control. Why? Because of disobedience. He has blinded your mind to the truth. Galatians, you have, uh, hallelujah, people that read the word over and over again in certain areas they are blind in. Galatians chapter 5, verses 18 to 21 tells you what would cause you not to inherit the kingdom of God. And see, the enemy blinds you to that truth. Hallelujah. Turn to Romans, turn your swords to Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and also go turn to Galatians chapter 1 verse 4 and hold your place there Galatians chapter 1 verse 4 hold your place there here in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 it reads do not be conformed to this world this age fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. Here, beloved, we are commanded not to be transformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external, superficial customs. But we are to be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of our mind. Hallelujah. Knowing that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. We are no longer to be fashioned ourselves, hallelujah, after and adapt to the external superficial customs of this world, of this image. And many in the body of Christ are fashioning themselves after the image and, and, and adapted to his external superficial customs of this world. And here is where Satan blinds the mind. When you make a conscious decision, beloved, Hallelujah, that you're going to stop listening to worldly music and you're going to start listening to uh, gospel music or worship music that, that sings and speaks about the word to transform your soul. You will have opposition. It will be a battle, beloved, but you can be delivered and set free. When you desire with all your heart, mind, soul, and body to be transformed into the image and likeness of Christ meaning taking on his character his attitude how he walked how he lived how he ministered to the hurting how he walked in authority and power against the, the demonic spirits how he set the captives free there will be opposition from the enemy and and do not lean this is where we cast down imaginations and thoughts that exalts itself against the knowledge of God it is God's desire that we be set free hallelujah Galatians chapter 1 verse 4 reads who gave yielded himself up to atone for our sins and to save and sanctify us in order to rescue and deliver us from this present wicked age and world order in accordance with the will and purpose and plan of our God and Father. God came to rescue us. When you became a born again believer, a new creature in Christ, he actually came to rescue you from the present wicked age, the evil wicked age that we live in, this world order that we live in today. Hallelujah. He came to set us free. 
Let us move on. Blinding minds of unbelievers. One, deception or depression. Depression. To be depressed is to be downcast, sad, discouraged, or in low spirit. It includes feelings of despair, despondency, dejection. Hallelujah. It includes, hallelujah, talking about depression. I want to look up this word, what dejection means. Hallelujah, dejection. Uh, so we can have a clear understanding of this word. Hallelujah. But depression, hallelujah. The, the enemy blinds the minds of unbelievers and believers, hallelujah, with the spirit of depression. Hallelujah. To be depressed is to be downcast, sad, discouraged, or in low spirit. It includes feelings of despair, despondency, and deject dejection. The word dejection means a state of melancholy, depression, solid extraordinary product evaluated from the bowels not that that ain't that okay deject hallelujah deject means lower one spirit make down hearted discourage frustrate dejection depression can lead to suicidal thoughts or actual suicide because of the hopeless feelings which produces uncontrollable mental grief, sorrow, heartache, and crying. Sometimes Satan uses circumstances of life to lead to depression. For example, a great loss or fear of loss, suppressed anger, a low self-concept, unfulfilled expectations and a negative attitude can all be used to cause depression. Here in Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10 we are warned about fainting in the day of adversity troubled or distressed circumstances which reads if you faint in the day of adversity your strength is small here we hallelujah, are warned about fainting in the day of adversity meaning trouble or distress circumstances and if you are in a, in a distressful circumstance hallelujah going through any type of trial pray and ask the Lord to strengthen you hallelujah strengthen your spirit and your soul man to walk through it hallelujah we don't want to faint hallelujah or become discouraged hallelujah sometimes depression is caused by the negative attitudes of those around us through which Satan works here in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 28 God's people admitted our brethren have discouraged our hearts reading out the amplified it says to what are we going up our brethren have made our hearts melt saying the people are bigger and taller than we are the cities are great and fortified to the heavens and moreover we have seen the giant like sons of the Amalekin 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 there this is when this story takes place is when uh, Moses sent spies over to Jericho into the land of Canaan to spy out the land and they came back with a report eight of them had discouraging 
news. They talked about the giants and that they were ants to them and how they can overcome and defeat them. But Joshua and Caleb said that we can defeat him. But because of the eight had a negative report, it caused the whole the rest of the people to be discouraged. So beloved, we want to associate ourselves with people that will encourage us, that will edify us. Hallelujah, that will not tear us down, that will not bring our past up, but will speak what Christ say that we are. That when we are in a de- uh, troubled time or distressed or suffering from depression, that we can call a brother or sister up and that they will encourage us and remind us who we are in Christ. Not agree with our depression. Glory to God. Someone that will pray for us, that love us enough to pray for us and with us. And and I I, I you know I, I question the the love of people. They say that they love you, but when you're in distress, when you're going through hard times, they pick and choose who they want to minister to. When we're commanded in the word of God that we are to encourage one another, sing psalms and spiritual songs, encouraging one another in the Lord because we are living in an evil day. How many people are we encouraging in our lifetime that we cross paths with? How sensitive are you in the spirit? Hallelujah. A a lady came into the store, uh, I think it was last month or last week sometime. Last uh, last month. And and she was distressed and I saw it. It was on a Sunday and I saw it on her. The Holy Spirit says she's, she's going through something. Hallelujah. And she began to talk. And I could see her fighting back the emotions of tears in her eyes. Come to find out hallelujah someone stole her purse out of a car that had her credit cards a license all her money and everything in her car and she had no way she had no way to get back home and this was on the church lot that this happened the church had gave her a gas card quote unquote that did not work Hallelujah. And and she just began she just burst out in tears, beloved. Hallelujah. You know, I came from behind my ca- ca- the counter to comfort her, to encourage her. Hallelujah. How how sensitive are you in the spirit? Are you picking and choosing who you want to edify and uplift? Hallelujah. Does someone call you on the phone that you don't want to talk? Oh my God, here was the name of calling again. Uh, do you have that type of attitude? I know people that have that type of attitude. I've heard s- certain people say that about other people. Is that walking in love? Is that having the love of Christ? Hallelujah. Glory to God. A heart of compassion. But the people were discouraged. Because of the negative report. That the eight spies brought back. They became discouraged. Turn your swords to Numbers. Chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21 verse 4. And I tell you beloved. When you're going through something. Hallelujah, and you're truly a child of God and and you want to hear the word. You 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 would think that you'll be able to call people, hallelujah, that you know that are saved and, and born again to, to bring you encouragement. I, I'm here to tell you, beloved. Mm, many of us need to die to ourselves. Many of us are selfish. Many of us have the attitude, well, you deserve that. You going through something hard. Uh, hard in your life that people automatically think that it's something that you have done to bring it on and that's not necessarily true that is not always the case hallelujah 
but we have this attitude that because so and so is going through this it, they, they, she, she must have done something to bring it on that is not necessarily the case beloved did Job do anything to bring on the attack that he received from Satan did he do anything no he did not we must begin to develop the mind of Christ and stop thinking negative about our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ to be there for one another and that's walking in love God God sees our hearts beloved he sees everything he hear our thoughts when we don't even have our thoughts yet he know what we gonna say about somebody before we even utter it out of our mouth we really must begin to desire and want to be changed into the likeness and image of Christ to have the same mind that he had Christ walked in unadulterated love towards all men even towards those that hated him that had a murderous heart against him he still walked in love to them towards them hallelujah and when he felt overburdened I believe that's when he went out on the mountaintop by himself to pray to spend time with the Lord to be re-energized to be refilled he didn't express hallelujah the heaviness to his disciples he he did not express it to them to discourage them instead he went to his father in secret and I believe during those times where it's not written in the Bible that he cried unto the father the father strengthened him to continue his task and sometimes beloved people can become overwhelming hallelujah but we must hallelujah depend on the strength of the Lord to continue to walk in love irregardless of the circumstances irregardless of how we are treated by people just because someone wasn't there for you when you needed them don't have that same attitude towards someone else that may need you hallelujah I've, I've even experienced that a uh, sister in the Lord she was going through and she was angry about it too when she told me that nobody was there for her and because nobody was there for her she wasn't going to be there for nobody else and that's not the attitude to take beloved that is the attitude of the enemy if nobody is there for you know that Christ is there for you know that the angels are there for you but you are not to have that same vindictive attitude towards other people that may need you. You miss out on your blessing. That is not walking in the spirit of love. No matter what, beloved, no matter what you're going through, be a encourager, not a discourager. Be an encourager whether it's via on Facebook we must really be sensitive to the Holy Spirit beloved is that many people in the body of Christ are hurting and they feel like God doesn't love them God has forgotten about them God don't care hallelujah God operates through people when will we understand that we are his servants hallelujah we are serving the Lord and if the Lord tells you hallelujah that I want you to minister to so and so and so and so be an encourager be an encourager if someone inboxes you on Facebook you ain't never talked to before but y'all friends you did befriend them and they inbox you saying sister can you please pray for me do you have time to, to counsel me and minister to me don't get puffed up take the time out and minister to that person encourage that person restore hope hallelujah the body of Christ is hurting 
and and we as people are constantly killing our own we're constantly rejecting them hallelujah the spirit of rejection can operate through anybody beloved whether you're saved or not you can reject someone and cause that spirit hallelujah to be injected in them just simply by your attitude or how you treat them but we are lovers I am a lover we are lovers because God is love and if God dwells within us oh Lord hallelujah we are lovers too and we need to manifest love to the hurting hallelujah to the loss be led by the spirit Christ was led completely by the spirit he said feed the poor hallelujah when the multitude followed him he, he had no means of feeding all these people and it was more than uh, three well, in one case it was three thousand not those was just men alone in another case it was five thousand but he had such a compassion that he fed them hallelujah we need to have the compassion of the Lord we are lovers turn your source to numbers 21 verse 4 which reads and they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom and the people became impatient depressed much discouraged because of the trials of the way notice it said that the people became impatient depressed much discouraged because of the trials of the way they were going to the promised land and they were facing many trials hallelujah Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 1 reads then we turned and look, took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea as the Lord directed me and for many days we journeyed around my Mount Sir sometimes the Lord beloved will direct you into the wilderness hallelujah good morning to you sister blue sometimes he would direct you into the wilderness hallelujah in the wilderness there's trials but the Lord is leading you we are not we are to pray and ask the Lord for strength in our wilderness journey see because we don't want to become like the people of Israel that became depressed and discouraged because of the trials of the way we are in Numbers chapter 21 verse 4 sister blue we don't want to become discouraged and depressed because of the trials on the way many believers especially those that have a call on their life must pass through the wilderness everything that Christ experienced beloved the true believer will experience just like the Holy Spirit led him out into the wilderness for, to be there to fast 40 days and 40 nights we are not above the master everything that he went through we are going to go through every believer must go through the wilderness hallelujah but in our wilderness journey hallelujah it's just you and God is a time to be pray to pray and ask the Lord to strengthen you because of the trials that are on the way in the way and we as the people of God should be so sensitive to hear the voice of God 
because he will tell you I want you to go and I want you to call up sister I want you to call up sister uh, Mary because she's she's facing a trial right now she's going through something call her up and encourage her with my word we must be obedient beloved I try myself when when someone is on my mind when the Lord lays someone on my heart and in my mind and I'm constantly thinking about them I'll pick up the phone and call to see how they doing how you doing what's going on in your world to encourage them beloved many times people are on our heart hallelujah and that is God laying them on our heart because they need to be they need some encouraging hallelujah they may may be getting ready to make a decision hallelujah that you don't know nothing about that God will use you to help to make the right decision I, it's so many times I've heard people when I call them up and I hear them say I, I was just thinking about you really oh I thought about you uh, I thought about you yesterday really when God lays someone on your heart and, and their name just won't go away God wants you to pick up the phone and call them or if you don't have their number inbox them in Facebook whatever media site they own and you own or if you see them in church that is a time that God wants you to show forth your love towards that individual to encourage them to lift them up and that's what unity means being there for one another hallelujah that's the sacrificing your time for another hallelujah now here we read in numbers 21 verse 4 that the soul of God's people was much discouraged King David often reflect discouragement in his psalms in Psalm 69 for example the Apostle Paul also had times of deep depression believe it or not beloved in the book of Psalms you read hallelujah about the different times that David was discouraged and how he would cry unto the Lord many times how he would pray unto the Lord and cry unto the Lord about his enemies about those that's trying to kill his life hallelujah Paul experienced discouragement he experienced depression let's go to 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8 hallelujah Paul experienced depression many of those that have a high call on their life will experience depression beloved believe it or not hallelujah and those are the times that we need to truly be sensitive in the spirit here in first second corinthians chapter 1 verse 8 it reads out the amplified bible for we do not want you to be uninformed brethren about the affliction and oppression dist oppressing distress which befell us in the province of asia how we were so utterly and unbearably weighed down weighed down depressed and crushed that we despaired even of life itself you know depression when you're depressed hallelujah the enemy will come in with thoughts of suicide and I have a heart for those that are in deep depression because I've experienced it where the enemy will come in and tell you you're not worth nothing oh if you kill yourself nobody will miss you don't nobody care about you don't nobody want you 
why don't you go ahead and just take your own life hallelujah and then when we inform somebody of what we're going through we get more rejected hallelujah one person hallelujah I remember when I was going through something uh, depression and the enemy was attacking me and called a sister up you know what she said to me I bind that Jezebel spirit don't you receive that wow that did not edify me at all y'all did not encourage me at all we must be sensitive in the Holy Spirit beloved he said for we do not want you to be uninformed brethren about the affliction and oppression the oppressing distress which befell us in the province of Asia how we were so utterly and unbearably weighed down and crushed that we despaired even of life itself hallelujah in 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 32 it reads we do what do I gain if merely from the human point of view I fought with wild beasts at Athesius talking about the people he, could, he, called, he said he fought with wild beasts at Athesia Athesius if the dead are not raised at all let us eat and drink for tomorrow we will be dead these were their attitude Paul hallelujah had to deal with difficult people hallelujah and, and it sometimes it beco becomes overwhelming the apostles suffered depression apostle Paul suffered from depression and he informed those in Corinth what was going on and the believers in Corinth sent them words of encouragement y'all they prayed for them they uplifted them they covered them in prayer and in love hallelujah like I said we are lovers and when someone informs us and let us know what is going on in their life we are not to tear them down but we are to cover them in prayer and in love speaking the word of God to strengthen them to let them know that they are love I love you sister not just by word beloved but by deed also demonstrating your love hallelujah how, for however long it may take the, 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 the spirit of uh, patience has left many believers they have no patience with other people they do, do not tarry with the hurting sacrifice your time if it's just for one person to see one person set free sacrifice it sacrifice your time Lord whom is it that you would have me to minister to? Hallelujah. It's not always about being seen and heard. But it's about what you're doing. How are you demonstrating your love for the brethren? Hallelujah. Are you praying for those that come seeking counsel? Come seeking help. Relief. Do you have a word for the weary beloved? And that's in the word of God. I can I seen it. I read it yesterday. And for the life of me, I can't remember where the scripture is. But do you have a word for the weary? The weary in spirit. We should always have a word for the weary in spirit. Not giving our opinion. Not giving our thoughts, but what the word of God says. And we are to be encouragers, not discouragers. We are to be lovers of one another, not haters. That's the world. Hallelujah. But Paul suffered from depression. 
If you do not conquer depression, it can also lead to oppression by satanic spirits. Let me repeat that. Sister Blue, we're in our spiritual strategy manuals. We're on chapter 15 of um, section by, uh, blind, Blinding Minds of Unbelievers. Hallelujah. He says, if you do not conquer depression, it can also lead to oppression by satanic spirits. This is a deeper form of depression where Satan gains more res restrictive power over the mind. Hallelujah. Praying and asking God for strength. We are already overcomers. But encouraging ourselves. Lord, send forth your angels to bring encouragement. Calling upon the, the uh, church. Hallelujah. Help from the sanctuary. Many times God does send help from the sanctuary beloved. Many times God speak to, to believers in the body. To, do, to be encouraged as this, this, this person, that person. But many are disobedient. They're, they're more concerned about finances. They're more concerned about having a big name and a title. Getting weary. Leaders should not get weary. If you're getting weary, then you need to really ask God, be in the face of God, asking Him to strengthen you. I had to do that, beloved. I got weary at doing the lessons. But I went to God and I was honest with Him. And, and He's strengthening me. I, we must draw, learn to draw our strength from the Lord. Not from ourselves, but from the Lord. And have the mind that we are servants of the Lord. To help, hallelujah, our brothers and sisters that are going through depression. That are going through trials in their life. So that they can be overcomers of whatever they're going through. That they may not, hallelujah, be uh, end up being led to oppression of Satan by evil demonic spirits. We have been anointed by the Holy Spirit to set the captives free. But many of us need to die to ourselves. Hallelujah. The other way that Satan discouraged the mind of unbelievers is through discouragement. Discouragement means to be without courage. Satan wants to discourage you because if you are without courage, you are ineffective in warfare. And that is so true, beloved. That's why I prayed earlier that the Lord would give us the spirit of Joshua. Joshua was bold. God was often telling him to take courage, be encouraged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Withdrawal. Another way Satan attacks the mind is through withdrawal. The purpose of this strategy is to isolate you from the rest of the body of Christ. Since believers function together in ministry as a body, withdrawal makes you non-functional. Example of men of God who were attacked mentally by Satan and withdrew are Elijah. 1 Kings chapter 19, you can read about that. And Jonah, Turn. let's go to Jonah now. Jonah chapter 4. Jonah chapter 4 verses 5 through 11. Hallelujah. We're going to read. 
Hallelujah. Jonah didn't want to go and preach to the city of Nivea. He had a pro he had an attitude with them, y'all. Because of what they did to his family. But God used him. God commanded him to go to preach to Nivea. Hallelujah. Let's read about this. Uh, uh, Jonah chapter 4 verse 5 through 11. So Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city. And he made a booth there for himself. He sat under it in the shade till he might see what would become of the city. He went on after God had to deal with him and punish him. Hallelujah. By you know the men on the boat cast him over the boat y'all. Um, hey, you know, you can often bring trouble in somebody uh, else's life because of disobedience. Jonah called himself running from God. How you going to run from God? He, he was running from God and God caused a storm to come up. And the men were panicking on the boat and they started praying to their gods. And Jonah was down and about a ship sleep. He was the only one that was was not up deck praying to his God. So they said, for hallelujah, it, it's because of you. So they threw him over the ship. The wind and all that stopped. But God caused a great fish. And I believe during the time of Jonah that there were still prehistoric fish in the, in the ocean. He said a big fish. Back in the prehistoric age, they had humongous fish, y'all. Big. But God had to discipline Jonah. Glory to God to get him to do what he wanted him to do. So he went on to the city of Nivea and he preached. He preached what God wanted him to preach. So he called himself, he went, and went up on top of a hill, made himself a booth and he sat there. He wanted to see what was going to happen to the city. In his mind, he thought that they weren't going to repent. They weren't going to respond to the message. Verse 6, And the Lord God prepared a, gar a guard and made it to come up over Jonah, that he might be a shade over his head. God became a shade over Jonah's head to deliver him from his evil situation. So Jonah was exceedingly glad to have the protection of the guard. I can't pronounce this word guard. G-O-U-R-D. Verse 7. God became a covering. A shade over Jonah's head. So that the heat would not. The, the, the heat from the sun would not cause Jonah. Hallelujah. To, to have a stroke. It was that hot. So God protected him. He covered him. Verse 7. But God prepared a cut worm when the morning dawned the next day. And it smote the guard so that it withered. Verse 8. And, and when the sun arose, God prepared a sultry east wind. And the sun beat upon the head of Jonah so that he fainted and wished in himself to die. And said... It is better for me to die than to live. And God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the loss of the guard? And he said, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. Jonah was angry enough to die, y'all, when, when the covering was removed. He wanted to die. He suffered depression. He suffered withdrawal. Verse 10, then saith the Lord, you have had pity on the guard for which you have not labored nor made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should not I spare Nivea? God used that covering, that tree as an example, as an illustration to Jonah. Jonah wanted God to destroy Nivea. But God had mercy on Nivea because Nivea repented. He said, And should not I spare Nivea, that great city, in which there are more than 100, 120,000 persons not yet old enough to know their right hand from their left, 
and also many cattle not accountable for sin glory to God God spared Nivea Jonah was hoping that God would destroy Nivea hallelujah and he became and, and, and he was depressed y'all he Jonah went through some things hallelujah and this hallelujah but God gave him an illustration should not God have mercy upon all mankind to save them and we are his instrument that he used to preach the gospel to the lost hallelujah should we not pray that the Lord save our enemies those that have hurt us those that have wronged us wouldn't that be the right thing to do hallelujah that the Lord would have mercy and save them should we not be like Christ who was on the cross and his enemies were still taunting and persecuting him even while he was on the cross should we not be like Christ who said father forgive them for they know not what they do many times believe beloved when people are hurting you they don't know what they're doing they don't know that they're being used by the enemy see because we read in Romans chapter 13 verse 10 that love does, does no wrong to its neighbor to its brethren love hurts no one so if the person that says that they love you are hurting you then they don't know what they are doing they are being controlled by some, some, something else and it's not love should we not have compassion father forgive forgive Mary for she knows not what she does deliver her Lord hallelujah Satan also blinds the minds of unbelievers and believers alike improper motives with improper motives a motive is your reason for doing something a motive is your reason for doing something many people do stuff out of jealousy many do things out of hatred towards another person what is your motive why are you doing what you are doing motives are important because although man looks on the outward appearance actions God looks on the heart 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 read but the Lord said unto Samuel look not on his countenance hallelujah I want to read that out of the Amplified Bible <coughs> and this is so important 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 he says I'm going to read it right here at the King James he said but the Lord said unto Samuel look not out of his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him for the Lord see it not as man see it for man look it on the outward appearance but the Lord look it on the heart <clears throat> it reads out the Amplified Bible but the Lord said to Samuel look not on his appearance or at the height of his statue for I have rejected him for the Lord sees not as man sees for man looks on the outward appearance but the Lord looks on the heart hallelujah Job chapter 10 verse 4 says have you eyes of flesh do you see as man sees God looks at the heart beloved and if we're really seeking after God's kingdom and righteousness our prayer should be Lord teach me how to <clears throat> teach me show me how to hallelujah to look at, at people the way that you see them 
hallelujah um if you ever seen a picture of me i have this this line right between my brow and when the sun is high it hurts my eyes and i frown many people look at the outward appearance of me and they perceive me as being mean I'm far from being mean but people look at the outward appearance many believers in the body of Christ look at the outward appearance and this is why so many are deceived because they're looking at the outward appearance baby you can dress up sin with a with nice looking clothes smelling good hallelujah you can dress it up looking real good but on the inside of that package is rottenness is stankiness is sin hallelujah in the heart and this is why God told Samuel and he's telling us today that we are not to look at a person's countenance or how t their, stat their status in society or their statue. But we are to have the eyes of the Lord. See, because Christ God said himself, I have refused that person. God is not concerned about your status in society. He is not he, he he's not concerned. He don't care about how fancy you dress when you go to church. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at the heart, beloved. Your heart. And we should pray, Lord, I want to have your eyes that I may see through your eyes, not my own. See, because when we're looking through the eyes of flesh, we're looking at man's outer appearance and we will judge them by what we see with our eyes. And many times we hurt many in the body of Christ because of that. Learning how to look in the spirit. Hallelujah. God don't look at on the outward appearance of man but we do and God wants to deliver us from looking through fleshly eyes to see beyond that to see through his eyes hallelujah but Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men John chapter 2 if you would turn your source there John chapter 2 verse 24 and 25 we're going to read hallelujah God looks on the heart and if you're reading the gospel Matthew, Mark, Luke and John hallelujah and, and I know this from experience beloved I read nothing but the gospel of the gospels Matthew, Luke, Matthews Mark, Luke and John that I my eyes begin to be transformed my heart begin to be transformed hallelujah I knew what was in men sin hallelujah John chapter 2 verse 24 and 25 said but Jesus for his part did not trust himself to them because he knew all men and he did not need anyone to bear witness concerning man needed no evidence from anyone about men for he knew himself knew what was in human nature he could read men's hearts hallelujah we want hallelujah the heart of God we want to see men hallelujah from the eyes of God and that's where so many of us miss it that's where so many of us are deceived we really want to hear see through the eyes of God we want uh, we want to have the heart of God hallelujah many people sent um, enter Christian Christian ministry for the wrong reasons many people enter Christian Christian ministry for the wrong reasons God ain't interested about you building no manifest 
He ain't interested about you building no big giant church. Church building that is. He's interested in the saving of men's souls. God is more concerned with motive than ministry. What is your motive? This is where you should place your concern also. For when motives are proper, then ministry will naturally flow. Your motives for ministry must be right. Turn your source to First First Peter chapter five. First Peter chapter five, verse two and three. What is your motive? What is your heart attitude in ministry? You in ministry just for the title? Or do you have the heart do you have a heart of the people for the people? Do you have the heart of God for the people? Many are in the ministry for the title. If you had a heart for God's people, should nobody constantly have to ask you to uh to go come with me so I can go minister to this sister or this brother? It should be an automatic thing when you have a heart for the ministry when you have the heart for God it's an automatic thing nobody has to force you nobody has to tell you but many are in it for the title your title means nothing in the eyes of God it don't mean anything 1st Peter chapter 5 verse 2 and 3 reads tend nurture guard guide and fold the flock of God that is your responsibility. Talking to the leaders. He says, tend, nurture, guard, guide, and fold the flock of God. That is your responsibility. Not by coercion or constraint, but willingly. Not dishonorably motivated by the advantages and profits belonging to the office, but eagerly and cheerfully. I've heard out of pastors' mouths saying how they sick of the flock, that they're tired. I've heard this out of their mouths. Hallelujah. Such things should not be spoken to the congregation. But that should be taken up between you and God. Hallelujah. Our responsibility as leaders is to tend, to nurture, to guard, to guide and fold the flock of God. That's our responsibility. Not by coercion enticing bringing in the world entertainment to draw the law seeing that no 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 not by constraint dang I don't I don't want to do this today dang having an attitude hallelujah but God want us to be willing to have a willing heart not by dishonorable motives because of the advantages and profits that belong to that office not because of riches not because of finances because you want the congregation to take care of you and your wife and your family what is your motive and Satan has gotten all up in that in the body of Christ many people's motives are wrong if God has called you to do a work, it is God. He's the one that's going to supply your need. We must keep our focus on the will of God. Jesus wasn't concerned about whether somebody was going to put money in his pocket or not. He went around ministering and doing good to all men and women alike. Because he knew that his reward was in heaven, not here on earth. I, I don't know how many times I can stress this. This is not our home. 
Yes, we are to maintain while we're here, but this is not our home. Hallelujah. We live in richly while our brothers and sisters are starving. God sees that. What is your motive? What is driving you to do what you do? Is it because you want a title? Is it because you want to be better than somebody else? What, what really? What's going on? And this is one reason, beloved, why I have separated myself. Because I want the pure, unadulterated heart of God. I want to minister from a pure heart. Not for, not for anything. God supplies my need. He is Jehovah Jireh to me. And he supplies my need for the ministry of Women of Grace and GICTC. Now, if you desire to give unto the ministry, hallelujah, glory to God, that's all good. God going to bless you. But if you don't, I know that God is my Jehovah Jireh. He shall provide. What is your motive? You must enter the ministry willingly. Not because of the advantages and benefits of the office. Not as a dictator, but as an example. Not dictating to people. Satan would try to create wrong motives for Christian service by putting them su subtly in your mind. Satan causes wrong motives for desiring God's power. You can find an example of this in Acts chapter 8. eight. Let's go to Acts chapter 8 verse 18 to 23. Acts chapter 8 verse 18 to 23 and the story of a man named Simeon. Hallelujah. Glory. Ch uh, Acts chapter 8 verse 18 which reads out the Amplified Bible however when Simeon saw that the Holy Spirit was imparted through the lying on of the apostles hands he brought money and offered it to them saying grant me also this power and authority in order that anyone on whom I place my hands may receive the Holy Spirit but Peter said to him destruction overtake your money and you because you imagined you could obtain the free gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter. For your heart is all wrong in God's sight. It is not straightforward or right or true before God. So repent of this depravity and wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, this constriving thought and purpose of your heart may be removed and disregarded and forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in a bond of forged by iniquity to feather souls God frowns on people who tell you that if you sow a certain seed thus and so that I will send you a prophecy a personal prophecy that is God don't like it when we exploit the gifts of the Holy Spirit with mammon. He doesn't like it, y'all. And as many in the body of Christ that are exploiting God's people, giving them false hope to give them false prophecy, using the gift of prophecy to exploit it for the means of gain God doesn't like that he doesn't like you cannot purchase the Holy Spirit if God is going to give you a prophecy he's going to give you a prophecy and you don't need to pay no money for it God doesn't like that y'all and there's many in the body of Christ that are exploiting God's people that way. And I know one that's on Facebook. I cannot think of his name right now. 
but I know one that's on Facebook that are exploiting the people of God hallelujah that is not the spirit that is not the, the Holy Spirit glory to God you can have vindictive motives for your actions vindictive means that you want to get even with someone who has done you wrong or who you do not like biblical examples include the disciples wanting to call down fire from heaven turn your swords to Luke chapter 9 Luke chapter 9 verse 54 Luke chapter 9 verse 54 we must begin to look at our motives beloved and I've heard many Christians say it too they want to call down fire on people that, that offend them the people that they don't like people that do them wrong and they want to call, call down the fire of God upon on them what is your motive of that's a vindictive motive here in uh, Luke chapter 9 verse 54 it says and when his disciples came and James and John observed this we must go up to see what they're talking about let's go to verse 51 he says now when the time was almost come for Jesus to be received up to heaven he steadfastly and determinate and determinately set his face to go to Jerusalem and he sent messengers before him and they reached and entered a Samaritan village to make things ready for him but the people would not welcome or receive or accept him because his face was set as if he was going to Jerusalem and when his disciples James and John observed this they said Lord do you wish us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did <laughs> that's deep let's read verse 55 but he turned and rebuked and severely censored them he said you do not know what a sort of spirit you are he said you do not know of what sort of spirit you are that was a demonic spirit for the son of man did not come to destroy men's lives but to save them from the penalty of eternal death and they sojourned on to another village I have heard those that call on the name of, of, of God those that claim Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior make threats like the apostles did if sister so and so keep on agitating and bother me they gonna find out what God I serve <laughs> what is your motives are you walking in a vindictive attitude a vindictive spirit here the apostles did not know what spirit they were of Christ did not come to destroy men's life but he came to save it are you praying for that person that is agitating you for, for God to save them or are you praying God show them who I am in the spirit that they may know hallelujah Jonah is another example he wanted Nivea to be destroyed we just got finished reading that Jesus come to set people free and our job for those that are agitating us those that are hurting us those that are doing us wrong those for those those people that we don't even like we are to pray that they were coming to the true revelation knowledge of Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ we are to pray for their salvation not to call fire down from heaven to destroy them not for God to get them get them daddy show them who I am what is your motive what is your attitude is that having the right attitude 
Hallelujah. David also had a wrong motive in the numbering of the people. God got on David about numbering the people. It reads in 1 Chronicles chapter 21 verse 1 out of the Amplified Bible, Satan, an adversary, stood up against Israel and stirred up David to number Israel. It says Satan, an adversary, or the adversary, stood up against Israel and he stirred up David's heart to number Israel. And if you continue to read the story, God was upset with David. David wasn't always perfect, y'all. God didn't say that David was a man after my own heart, not because he was quick to repent. David made many mistakes, but David was a man after God's own heart because he loved God's law and he loved God's people. He loved God. God loves his creation. He loved his creation enough to send his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to die in our place. He preached the word. The word became flesh and he preached the kingdom of God unto the lost. That should be our motivation. That should be our purpose because we love God and we love God's people. We love his creation and we want to see them saved. We want to see them rescued from the wrath that is to come. Hallelujah. This should be our heart desire, beloved, to have compassion upon people, especially those that hurt us. Hallelujah, that they will be delivered and set free. That they will be delivered from the world's love, because the world does have a love, and it's not God's love that many of the, the believers in Christ are filled with. We are to pray as Christ prayed. And, and it was Christ's desire that we all come into unity as one. Pray for those that hurt you. Pray for your enemies that the Lord would open up the eyes of their understanding that they will see and behold the true gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach. Pray that the blinders that are on their eyes is preventing them from seeing the glorious gospel of Christ the Messiah be removed. Pray, hallelujah, that God would have mercy upon their souls and that he would save them. Don't be sitting up praying that God will show them who you are. That God will get them. Pray for their souls, beloved. Do not get weary in well-doing. Hallelujah. We're going to pick up. Uh, I've been led by the Spirit to complete this spiritual strategy because it's so important that we know how the enemy attacks the mind is so important um, then we'll get back to hearing the voice of God our minds must be set be must be set free in order to hear the uh, the voice of God we must be set free hallelujah to hear what daddy God is saying to the church glory to God and that is our goal father we just thank you we thank you for your word Lord we thank you for all that you've done and yet going to do for your beloved bride. We thank you, Lord, for the word on today. And Father, that you we are we, we are gaining understanding. Hallelujah of how the enemy works, O oh Lord. We thank you, Father, that we are encouragers and not discouragers. We thank you, Father, that we have uh, Father, that we have a word for the weary. 
hallelujah, that we have a word for the weary, that we encourage them, that we cover them in prayer and in love, O oh Lord. Father, that, I, that when we say we love you, Father, we do it in demonstration. There's a manifestation, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, that, Father, we're praying for our enemies, that you would save them, Lord, that you would bring them into the true revelation, knowledge of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Father, give us tongues to speak the gospel. Give us tongues to speak truth, O oh Lord. Father, give us a let our uh, Father touch our eyes, our eyesight, Lord, that we may see through your eyes. Touch our heart, O oh Father, that we may love with your heart. Teach us to walk right. Give us right motives, Father. Let us examine ourselves to see where our motives are. Why we do what we do. Is it for fame and fortune? Is it for a title? Or is it because we truly love you and because we yield in humility to be your servant, to do your will? Oh, Father, show us our ways that we may turn back to you in purity, Lord, in honesty. Father, it's not the thing, uh, it's not hallelujah the outward appearance or the things that we do father that concerns you but it's the condition of our heart you see our heart oh lord make our heart right wash our hearts father with hyssop that it may be clean wash us that we may be clean father forgive us of our sins oh lord cleanse us in the blood of christ oh lord continually lord god we thank you father for this word on today and i ask that you bless your people on today Father, that they will me begin to ponder what their motives are for doing what they do and why they do it, O oh Lord. That they will really seek in their heart, really go deeply and find out, Father, why they love you the way that they love you. Father, why they do what they do, O oh Lord. What are the motives, O oh Lord? We thank you, Father. We glorify and praise you. Oh, Father, use your people, Father, as instruments to deliver those that are in depression, to help them to overcome, Father, that spirit. Deliver us, O oh Lord, that we may be ministers of the gospel of peace, that we may be ministers of love to those that are weary, to those that are depressed, to those that are going to in uh, are in trials, O oh Lord. Father, we want to be servants used by you to bring glory to your name that people Father would know that you truly love them Lord we thank you Father for this word on today in Christ the Messiah's name we pray amen well beloved on tomorrow's Tuesday I am trying to make a schedule hallelujah that will fit my work day but hopefully tomorrow morning at 7.30, I'm trying to get back on that 7.30 um, study. We'll be talking about wrong attitudes and emotions. Wrong attitudes and emotions on tomorrow. Rebellion, accusation, and condemnation we'll be dealing with on tomorrow hallelujah pray for me beloved keep me in prayer see because i i love the lord and 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 i love god's people i'm i don't i'm not doing this for no title to be seen or to be heard but that the people will be set free by the word of god that they will receive truth hallelujah and i meant to you i did get discouraged i did I really did. I'm going to admit that to you. Hallelujah. Because I'm just one person. Hallelujah. And, I, and the work is not for one person. It's for all of us in the body of Christ. If you know of someone that need to hear this teaching. Introduce them to uh, Women of Grace on Spreaker. Uh, if they don't have the internet. Hallelujah. But they have a phone. They can call 724-444-7444 and listen to the broadcast that way. Hallelujah. Lord is leading me to, to, to try to make provision 
for people to hear the word to be set free whether it's by internet or whether it's by phone once again the call in number is 724-444-7444 and enter in the code 143040-POUND the code is 143040-POUND you can call in to hear the broadcast hallelujah well beloved until tomorrow may God bless you may God keep may God keep you may his face shine up on you as you continue to sit at his feet as you continue to seek his face by sitting at his feet and learning from him until tomorrow may you have a blessed and wonderful Monday God bless you and shalom Thank you.